Let's look at a simple example. We have a metal rod with one end being pivoted at point A, and then the other end is attached to a string, and the other end of the string is attached to uh, the ceiling. And the rod has a mass M and a length of L. Now, at this very moment, everything's stationary. Now, suddenly, the string breaks. So at this instant, you're asked to find the acceleration of point B, okay, at the far end of the rod. At this instant also, the velocity is zero. Okay, it's, it's just going to start to move, okay? But its velocity is still zero at this instant. But the acceleration is there. Okay, it starts to have acceleration. Okay, and you have to find what the acceleration is at this very instant. Now, how do you find acceleration? Well, first of all, recall the expression for acceleration. Okay, for something that's rotating. There's two components, tangential component and the normal component. All right, tangential component is defined as R uh, alpha cross R, and normal component is omega squared times R vector. Now, for a rigid body that's rotating about a fixed point, as pure rotation, tangential component reduces down to R times alpha. It's just the magnitude of R times the magnitude of angular acceleration, that's all. And for normal component of acceleration, it reduces to r omega squared. That's it, okay? Where r is the distance perpendicular to the tangent direction, okay? So, acceleration is point B is something like this, okay? And this is the tangent component, okay? Tangent right here. Now, what about the normal component? Okay, sure, you, we should consider that because point B follows a circular path, right? So from previous chapters, you know, we realized that a point that's following a curved path always has two components, tangent and normal. But tangent component, well, it's defined as R alpha, right? So, so that has a value, of course. Normal component is R omega squared. Now it's a function of velocity alone. But at this very instant, velocity is zero. Okay. R omega squared, but omega squared is zero. Or omega is zero. Therefore, there is no normal component. So, there's only tangent component where R right here is the entire length of the rod. Right, because this is rotating about point A. Okay, so this turns out to be, okay, we just call it AB itself, right? To be L, the length, times alpha. Now, length is a constant, so really, the unknown in this problem becomes alpha. So, how do we find alpha? Well, Let's look at the two equations that we have available under the new second law method. The linear equation, force equals ma. And then the moment equation. Now, alpha appears only in the moment equation. So, let's use this equation directly, just right away. Okay? Now, before we can apply this equation, though, we need to draw free body and kinetic diagrams. Now, here I combine both free body and kinetic diagrams together in one picture. Now, you should really separate them if, uh, if that helps you visualize okay, and make things clear. But you might find it maybe a little more useful to, to combine both of these together, okay, just like this. Okay. Uh, especially if there are not too many pic uh, uh, vectors involved. Okay. Otherwise, it's going to be too crowded. So, let's look at the rest, the free body. The free body diagram includes all the forces as well as a flight couple. In this problem right here, we're not applying any couple, right? You're not really okay, externally apply any, any extra moment to it, right? So there's no M 
uh, vector here. Now, the only forces that appear here is the weight, which goes through the center of gravity, G, which is right in the middle uh, of the whole rod, as well as the two reaction forces at point A, this pivot point, okay, X and Y direction. Now, at this instant, after the, uh, the string breaks, okay, there's no more tension holding it, so there's nothing here. So that's it, three vectors of forces, that's all. Move on to kinetic diagram. Kinetic diagram will include the acceleration terms. Now here I split into the rotational and linear acceleration. The rotational acceleration is I alpha, okay, I about center of gravity, I G alpha. The linear acceleration is through the center of gravity, and keep in mind, again, there are two components. MA tangent component and MA normal component, but we just have concluded that the normal component of acceleration is zero at this instant because it's equal to R omega squared and omega is zero at this instant. So, only tangent component survives. Okay? So you have this rotational angular acceleration term and then the linear acceleration term. That's all. So now our free body diagram and kinetic diagram are complete. So next, apply this moment equation. So first, write down the full equation. Sum of moment equals I alpha. I'm going to define positive as being clockwise. Now, here, you need to choose a point to take moment about. You can, you can choose any point you like. You can choose to take moment about point G, center of gravity, or point B, if you like, or point A. Whatever point you choose, okay, you can work through the solution, it should give you exactly the same answer. However, the difference is, depending, depending on the point you choose, your solution might be very short, or it could be extremely long. Well, we like short answers, okay? Now, choosing a point, or choosing the right point, okay, could be the key to the success of this Newton's second law method. Now, which point is the right point to choose for a good or clever point to choose? Well, you need to think about how you get moment. Okay, and what is moment? Moment is force times moment arm. Okay? And moment arm is the distance between the force vector and the point you take moment about. So, so you do want to take moment about a point where you can eliminate some forces. Okay? This means that the moment arm is zero. Okay, so you do want to take the point where there are some forces going through the point. For example, point A. So we have these two reaction forces going through it. So the moment arm between, let's say, this force and this point A is zero. Therefore, force times zero is zero. This means that these two forces will drop out of this equation. Okay, which is nice. Alright, so let's do that. Let's choose point A. Okay, that's the point where we take moment about. Now, next, just expand the whole equation okay, by applying it to the entire free body diagram. Okay, so you do need to take into account all these things. Okay, so I'm going to just write down the full equation and then simplify from there. Okay. 